Welcome to or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And on your screen, you see a world premiere, a series of chronographs from Breitling, and they are called Super AV B04 Chronograph GMT 46. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. The four chronographs are inspired by the original 1953 co-pilot reference 765 AV Aviators watch from Breitling and the legendary airplanes. And these airplanes are from left to right. You have here the P Papa 51 Mustang. The chronograph of the blue dial is referring a playing tribute to the what? Foxtrot 4 uniform Corsair. The chronograph with the green dial to the Curtis Warhawk. And the only one featuring also a ceramic inlay in the basil is honoring the Mosquito airplane and so this is the new collection or oh, the experts among you who are saying oh, Alexander is talking about four watches but the collection is uh, made out of five watches that's correct there is one gold version of the P51 Mustang in a full gold uh, 18 karat full gold case but I did not get this version for my review that goes online the 17th and today is the 15th two days earlier so it's two days before the world premiere will take place of the watch. I can film them and you as you watch the video right now are probably watching it the 17th of November 2021. So um, let me quickly introduce you um, those four watches. They are all in a steel case. Um, they all feature a um, basal a uh, stainless steel basal, the exemption of the rule is the Mosquito on the right side that features a ceramic inlay and the basal. The diameter of these steel cases is 46 millimeters. Um, the thickness is a 15.9 millimeters and the so-called lug to lug distance is 51, 51 millimeters. And also interesting for you, the bracelet tappers from uh, here on top, on top here, 24 down to 20 millimeters. All the watches feature the cambered sapphire crystal that is very beautiful. I will show you all details, all details, of course. Um, a feature, a sapphire crystal that is, has an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. This is also why these watches do look so beautiful here in the light. The watches have a see-through case back and that one is anti-reflective treated on only one side. This is a total different setting for a video this time. Um, yeah, I decided to film in natural light. I'm such a huge fan of that warm light you have in autumn. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. Gives all the things you film uh, what they need. <laughs> the first watch or the first chronograph I'm showing you from this new Breitling Super Abi B04 Chronograph GMT collection is the one dedicated to the Mustang, the Mustang. And you all know that this, uh, this is the best all-around fighter plane of its area. And Breitling has made two versions. The steel version you see on your screen and there is, uh, yeah, there would be also a 18 karat red gold version with an anthracite dial and a black leather strap, but this one is exclusive to Breitling Boutiques and being sold online on Breitling.com. So now let me start to show you the chronograph with all its, all its beauty, all its beauty. There you go. From the side, I said it before, thickness 15.9 millimeters and the so-called lug to lug distance. So I have to find my pointer, here it is. So that's the distance I always measure from one lug end to the other lug end. And this 
is 51 millimeter. I said it before, the watch features a see-through case back and the reflective treatment on one side only. And what you see here is a Breitling in-house in -house chronograph, self-finding chronograph with a GMT or UTC function. So something very, very useful, the watch or the chronograph has a column wheel. You see here the column wheel, uh, a vertical clutch. Uh, it's a 4 hertz chronograph, 28,800 semi-oscillations. I will turn the it around and show you. Here's the balance wheel oscillating at 4 hertz, 28,800. So what you see on the dial is one eighth of a second. I said it before, vertical clutch as all Breitling watches. Also this watch is a COSC certified, officially COSC certified. It is written here, certifié chronomètre. That means certified chronometer. And this tells you that the watch is accurate to minus four plus six seconds and has been tested by the official chronometer testing institute in switzerland so what do we see on the front side we have the running second positioned at nine o'clock we do have a 30 minute counter positioned at three o'clock and a 12 hour counter being positioned at six o'clock including the date the 28th and we have the hour hand, the minute hand, the running second. Do, 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 do you see? Swiping over the dial in one eighth of a second. And then there is a second hour hand. And this is the UTC or GMT hand showing you as second zone time, please, guys, zone time and not time zone. I live in the time zone of Paris here in Vienna. And in the time zone of Paris, there is a zone time. And the zone time is UTC plus one. UTC plus one in winter and in summer, it's UTC plus two. So this is the little difference, but something I always try to mention that a watch cannot show a time zone because a time zone is something geographically and a zone time is something that has to do with hours, minutes and seconds. The watch has a start stop push piece and you can reset by pushing here why well, i will just oh i have to start it again would be a good idea to start it again and as you see we can reset watch closely all the hands will reset to zero now but not the running second at nine o'clock attention there we go reset to zero what else do we see we do have a 24 hour scale that is of course linked to the UTC or GMT hand. And we do a, have a bi-directional turning basal that turns in both directions. Yep, both directions. With another 12 hour indication, you have one, two, three, four, etc. to 12. So what you could do in theory, set a third zone time or a third time you want to refer to. I will show that a little bit later with the next watch so that we don't only and we don't see only one watch all the time. When I show you the next of the four chronographs, you will probably understand why I wanted to film in natural sunlight. Look how beautiful this tone in tune blue dial looks like. So this chronograph plays tribute to the what? Foxtrot 4 uniform Corsair. It features, as I just said, a blue and blue dial with Tony Tone chronograph counters and a black leather strap. Look at the dial, how beautiful this is when I'm turning it. Yeah, we do have some reflections, of course, but when I'm playing a little bit in the sun, how beautiful it is. Very, very, very beautiful. Yes, this is, I have to say this because I'm a huge fan of blue and yeah. This would probably, in theory, be the favorite, my favorite, I'm not sure. I um, spontaneously fell in love with uh, the Mosquito version, that's the black one. Um, Panda look uh, dial with the ceramic inlay, but this is the highlight, or maybe the one you see at the end, so stay tuned, don't quit the video now. So, first of all, it's a screw-down crown. The case is waterproof to 100 meters. Bravo Breitling! Very well done. So this really is a watch you can use when you want to use it 
even though it doesn't feature a bracelet but a leather strap. So um, swimming, uh, diving, etc. or yeah. Whatever you do in water might harm uh, um, over a longer period those beautifully leather straps, but uh, yeah, you could use a, um, a fabric strap or something. I am sure Breitling has something to offer or will have something to offer, but the, the case is 100 meter waterproof and this is fantastic. Bravo Breitling. So you unscrew first position, you can wind the you can wind the watch, it's not really necessary, but you could wind the watch or the movement features a power reserve of 70 hours. So pretty much already of power available if you are not wearing the watch. So and now comes the nice thing, first position of the crown and watch. Now you can independently adjust the hours. And this is the only way, I really say the only way, how a GMT must and should work. Everything else that does not work like this is not a GMT or UTC watch. It is more or less useless crap. A watch to play around at home or, I don't know, uh, a watch where the person who designed the watch has no clue about traveling and the needs of a real traveler. So let us do one thing. I stop. You see uh, hacking seconds or second stop. Everything stops. You see it clearly. The running second stop then also the central second hand stop. But I will now show you something. What you do is you do a very first adjustment depending on where you live. And you see when you pull out the crown in the third position, also the 24 hour hand starts to move on the dial. And so you would do your pre-selection of your home time and uh, always take 10 past 10 to make the watch smile at you on your screens and you see 10 past 10. And the hand with the red arrow shows 10 o'clock. Here's nine, here's 11, 10 o'clock. So, and now let's assume we are traveling from east to west. We are boarding a plane here in uh, Vienna and we are flying to New York. And we have been arriving in New York, blah, 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 blah. Um, some hours later, what you want to do is you want to readjust your watch, of course. Okay, let me, let me, okay. Let's say we started at uh, 10 o'clock something, blah, blah, blah. We have been arriving. Uh, it's just something, okay. So don't worry, it's uh, just to say something. Okay, here we arrived uh, something three o'clock and now we need to readjust home time or uh, we need to adjust local time uh, to distinguish it from home time. Home time would be three o'clock, you see 15 on the dial. So what you do, you pull out the crown and uh, uh, you first, you, assuming that what the uh, crown is closed, you unscrew, you go in that legendary position and what you do, we have three o'clock, six hours time difference to New York. So you go back, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you have local time in New York, nine o'clock, of course, six hours difference, and indicated with the small arrow, red arrow, three o'clock, in the afternoon of 1500. So this is so easy to use and so useful. So this is the only way. And of course, and of course, it is a certified chronometer. You would be really <clears throat> yeah. disappointed if you pull out the crown and the watch would stop. Why should it? It is a certified chronometer, more precise than any announcement you will hear on an airplane coming from any one from that crew of that airplane, you have precise time. Why should you lose your time? And why should you need to readjust the watch with the help of a reference time on your smartphone? So the watch does not stop. It does not stop. Haha. <laughs> and so, as you see, it continued to run. You screw down the crown and you're ready to go. Let me continue to show you the so useful UTC and GMT function with the next version with the green dial and the green dial, a military green dial with white contrasting chronograph counters is playing tribute to the Curtis Warhawk plane. So I finished my little trip from Vienna to New York and readjusting time without losing the position of the watch. And you can clearly see well, here the watch is uh, in the position where the crown is completely pulled out. I will start it again. 
and what we are going to do now, we're going to reset it um, to 10 o'clock and make it smile. I will just close the crown so the, the central second hand will start to swipe over the dial again in one eighth of a second, you see here. Again, here is the pointer being positioned at 10 o'clock to indicate you now synchronized local and home time. This is the date. This is the 30 minutes counter, the 12 hour counter and the running second. You see on the dial the B, the Breitling B applied on it. Breitling 1884, here is written Swiss made. So once again, uh, from the side, you have uh, brushed flanks a nicely, very nice looking crown that remembers me a little bit, a little bit of the crowns we have seen on IWC watches before, but the CEO, Mr. Kern, yes, was the CEO of IWC before. So, but I expect that these type of crowns have been used on different kind of, uh, uh, yeah, watches that were linked to aviation. So. This might be or must not be a coincidence that we do re-see such a crown and this chronograph. Once again, playing around here with the sapphire crystal, so you can really see there are, yes, some distortions, of course, from the side. You see that now nice here when I'm playing around. There we go. And you see when the dial comes back on your screen, you can see that there, yeah, you see the distortions um, on the 30 minute counter, but that's how it is. That's due to the fact that it is not a flat sapphire crystal. Gorgeous. The Super Avi Mosquito features a combination uh, of polished and satin brushed black ceramic basil and a black dial with a white contrasting chronograph counters. Uh, yeah, panda look, very nice. What I wanted to say, uh, in terms of uh, readability at first glance, I would say this is the tool watch out of this series of chronographs. If there would, if we should call one tool watch, this will be the tool watch because readability couldn't be better due to the high contrast of the orange colored hands. You can see here the orange colored hands really offer excellent readability. Also the Rojo and the contrasting black um, indications of one, three, etc. at 24 hours couldn't be better for readability. The ceramic inlay in the basil. It's an inlay. It is not a complete ceramic basil. It's an inlay, of course, um, is also offering excellent readability because there are less reflections than on the stainless steel basils you have seen before. They are quite shiny with the polished surface. So if you are really looking for the tool watch among these chronographs, that's the one you should probably have a closer look at and for me, for my personal opinion, together with the blue one, it will be my favorite. It will be very hard to decide for me which one to take. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me quickly yeah, show you the date change. Uh, of course, there is no quick uh, date adjustment. This is not possible technical wise. Um, you have to um, you can't change, yeah, you could either uh, pull out the ground in the, in, in, the, in the last position and turn around, you would get crazy. But what you do actually is you get it in the position of readjusting your zone time. And once you start turning, you will see 10, it's, it's 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Ah, you saw? Instantaneously when you um, get to, when you get to 12 o'clock, and of course, it will also go back, but not instantaneously, of course. But I can do the exercise once again for you. We come up. It's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Watch. Now watch, watch. Yep, the 29th. 
yes, this is how you make the date change and you go back, you can go back and forward as much as you like. What I will do now, I will stop it, pull out the crown and make a date change by following the hands and we will watch what happens. We see that the hand approaches uh, midnight, it's 9 p.m. now and what's happening? Now is, yep, the 29th, have you seen it? The 29th, perfectly um, uh, instantaneously jumped at midnight, no doubt, no doubt. Let me quickly run around again. We're coming back again, once again to, yes, midnight, 10 p.m. Watch what happens. Put it into the focus, what happens, and you will see instantaneously at midnight. There we go. Perfect. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Yep. So um, now I will quickly in front of you reset the watch to the 28. You see, you can quickly go back. Nothing happens. The watch is completely relaxed. I will so you can see what you have to do when you adjust the watch. Set it back to 10 o'clock. So we, we see now um, the UTC hand has reached 10 o'clock. Then this is for synchronizing it. I close and what I will do is now put the hand here, pull out again and then we are here again. 10 past 10, have you seen? That's easy. No rocket science in this, once again, I've said it before, is the only way, please guys, the only way how you should accept or you should ever think about buying or considering buying or considering taking in a closer choice of other watches, the only way how a UTC GMT function has to work. And who developed it? Yes, it was Rolex with the GMT Master 2. They did that the very first time that you have the possibility to change the hour in one hour steps without stopping the movement. This is the strap and I will only show one watch uh, because all the straps are the same. It's only the color that makes the difference. So you see nice uh, stitching taking reference to some colors of the watch. And you have here a uh, Folding clasp, that is a kind of a combination of a pin buckle and folding clasp. It has a matte surface with Breitling engraved on it. You see here the loops, the loops, one with stitching, one without stitching. And once again here, the nice finishing of uh, this strap. So let me open it up for you. So you have a double security, only when you press on the double security it will open up. Um, I have to first slide out and you saw you have to press on the double security then it will open up so this is how it looks like and the nice thing is uh, for any quick adjustment uh, the combination of having both a pin buckle and a folding clasp uh, guarantees or makes it very easy to handle and to set to adjust the length if you need to do so so you can um, use this as you would use it with a pin buckle. You just adjust in the hole you want to adjust. Let's say this one, you slide in. Yeah, with gloves, as always, I, I decided to take this one. Yep, here you see. Then you will close it, this side, you close, and then you have the function of a folding clasp. Watch, you close. Click, there's a click, you have haptic feedback, and what is left here, you just insert into the two loops, and there you go. This makes the watch look perfectly. You can see, and once again, what you see here is 24. What you see here is 20 millimeters. So it's tapering from 24 to 20 millimeters.
My wrist size is uh, 17 centimeters. A big watch. It is a uh, aviator's watch, a eh? pilot's watch, aviator's watch. And it might have some size. Uh, you don't need to have small watches on your wrists. And with that 51 millimeters of uh, lock to lock, it, yeah, in my humble opinion, fits on my wrist. I like huge watches. And yeah, of course, there's no arguing. If someone says that's too big, okay. No arguing, tastes are different. And I will not argue. I like it, but if you don't, never mind. This is the loom shot of the Mosquito. Clearly visible also the swiping central second hand that reaches 12 o'clock right now. Loom shot of the P1 Mustang and you see a difference that also the 30 minute counter features some super luminova. Loom shot of the Curtis Warhawk with the military green dial also here. Very good visibility in darkness and uh, you can all clearly see the central second hand swiping over the dial. Loom shot of the Corsair with the blue dial. Nicely visible that the 30 minute counter has some additional super luminova and you can therefore also guess or probably even read the elapsed time when you're using the chronograph. Is there anything I would want to mention that I did not like so much on the watches? Yes, while for instance on the blue dial you have an exactly matching color uh, date disc. There is no color difference. It's perfectly matching the color of the dial, looking excellent. You have the same um, with the black dial, so the date disc. Here perfectly matches the color of the dial, no color difference. I would have hoped, I would have yeah, wished that the color difference, it's clearly visible that the color of the subdial is silver and the color of the date disc is white. And yeah, we could, I think they could have done this a little bit better. It's not such a big deal to find, oh, let me here show it to you in different angles so you can see uh, and figure out what I'm talking about. Same applies here and you see it's a creamy white subdial, silvery creamy white and it is a really white data disc and uh, yeah, that contrast is not good. They could have done it better, they could. Well, that's a little remark. Um, is there anything else? Um, no, not really, but uh, maybe, um, yeah, and this is something Breitling, they can't change because there are still these patterns on uh, silicon hairsprings. The last patterns um, are uh, until the year 2023. They are covering or protecting the development of a silicon hairspring. So Breitling until then is not able with many other brands as all the Richemont brands uh, is not able to uh, implement any silicon air springs in its watches. And if you take uh, this movement, the B01, or its modification as a B04 with the second uh, zone time indication, uh, Tudor uses the same movement and Tudor uses a silicon air spring in the watch or uh, in the movement. And this makes, of course, a difference when we come or talk about the influence of strong magnetic fields on a watch and the then occurring, probably occurring problems with accuracy. So a silicon air spring would be it, but Breitling can't. Of course they would. So if you're questioning why aren't they doing it, they would do it. Of course. They're not stupid. They would, of course, but they are not allowed to do it. But the rest of the watch, the rest of the watch, perfect. Crazy. I really, 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 oh, I really, really love them. Um, George Kahn and his team, in my humble opinion, did a great job. Wonderful. On your screen is the pouch, the watches, the chronographs come with uh, nicely done with a textile surface and uh, yep. Now let me surprise you. You open up. There is the watch. That's not everything. You have the guarantee card, of course, you see here. I will swipe it out. Yep. 
and so on. Serial number, everything you need, of course. And now, and this is really intelligent, and I love it, is, uh, yeah, you see here, what you see here is another pouch. And uh, the watch is held in the box, if you want. Here's the box. There's a Breitling logo on it. And the watch is held in its box. And I will just take it off, you see here. And what you get then, and this is really fantastic, here is another pouch. You can open, and when you're traveling, you can use it as a travel pouch. The watch goes in here, perfectly fits in here. And if you want to put it back in its box, you just roll it, roll it, and you slide the watch on the roll, and you put it back in the box. That's really um, yeah, thought through, I would say. Um, that's uh, something you can really use. And yeah, congratulations. Uh, they've done a good job here. And in case you need more storage space, you can dismantle the entire pouch, as you see, make it flat and store it this way. I could dismantle it in front of you with one hand. You open up here, you see? You open up here. There you go. We do the same at the other side. We open up here. We open up here. And there it is, dismantled. Here is the watch. Here is the another pouch. And yep, brightling. Let's put it here. So, everything together. Well, thanks a lot for watching this video. Um, I'm very keen to read your comments and so on. Um, yup, let us meet again here on Watch Advisor and YouTube. And for today, I say bye bye. And I'm happy that I was able to film those watches um, before the world premiere and to let you um, or to be able to show you them on the day when they are worldwide presented, the 17th of November 2021. Bye bye for today.